little kid based guy here which going on YouTube welcome back to the channel so I have a lot of projects to share with you guys a lot of cool things coming up on the channel so the first thing I want to say is that if you are not aware if you didn't watch youth man techno dad and Joe and tails podcast on daily hi-fi they kind of leaked some cool stuff I'm in a collaboration with so many different youtubers and we're gonna bring you some content which I think should be out later on today or tomorrow we did a big collaboration together where we are gonna tell you guys what we recommend for home theater, speakers, TVs, whatever the case is. So soon there'll be a video release from um, Joe and Tell and Tito Dad and all those guys and myself of all of us telling you guys what we would recommend in your home theater. Quick video, not too long, but it should be really cool. So stay tuned for that. Second of all, on my channel in particular, for my car audio guys, I have some speakers coming in that are supposed to be better than um, the ones that I have. I have Diamond Audio in my car right now, and a company is sending me some speakers to review for you guys, and they have a discount code, which I'll tell you guys about too. If you think you like them, you can get them for a really good price. Um, but I'm gonna be doing some car videos here soon, showing you guys some speakers that should be really really cool um, so stay tuned for that also I purchased some of my new speakers but that's for a later video so stay tuned all right so today's video topic is gonna be basically the accessories that I think that every home theater needs to make it perform its best when I was looking for speakers I really wanted to get something that was gonna be an upgrade for my bulk audio LSIMs and it was really hard for me to find something but I did find something and I'm buying them now so they're gonna be in really soon but I was thinking to myself since my home theater is pretty much deconstructed right now, I'm pretty, I have nothing in here other than my amplifier and my preprocessor. So I was thinking, maybe now it will be a good time to go back and kind of make sure that everything is up to par. Let's go ahead and upgrade everything so that I get the best performance out of my new speakers. So I decided to make a video for you guys, and I'm going to go through everything that I'm going to get from my home theater and why, as far as speaker wires goes and components that keep them cool, all that stuff, cable hiders. I'm going to go through and show you guys what I'm looking to do to my home theater to improve it aesthetically and its performance. So let's do it. Now when I get my new speakers, there's one big thing that I'm looking to upgrade and that's going to be my speaker wire for two reasons. One, because I don't have a long enough wire so it's going across my living room under a rug. So we're going to tidy that up. But another thing is, you, I think a lot of people look past this. The size of your speaker wire plays a big role in how much power it gets from your amplifier to your speakers. The longer your wire is, the bigger the gauge you need to have. Because if not, as that wire goes through your room, it starts to dissipate how much power can go through it. The thicker the gauge of wire, the more power that can reach your speakers, and then you get more performance out of them, and more performance out of your amplifier as well. So your amplifier may be rated at, let's say, 150 watts. That's awesome. But by the time it gets to that wire, you're not getting all 150 watts. So the thicker the gauge, the more power transfer you can have. So I'm gonna go for 12 gauge. That's perfect for home theater. Maybe some might call it overkill. I think 12 gauge is a really good number. And then the lower the number, the thicker the gauge is. Some people get 10 gauge, some people get eight gauge. But I think 12 gauge is enough for most home theaters, unless you're running it through a really long wall or a really long room, then you may wanna think of something thicker. Um, but I'm gonna upgrade my speaker wire. I'm gonna do it with oxygen free copper or OFC. Um, that does the best at transferring power from one end to another and it also does um, it's more efficient on your amplifier way more efficient with power transfer um, so I'm gonna get that kind of wire and you guys can see on the screen that I'm showing you guys some examples of what I'm gonna get um, but don't look past your speaker wire it's very very important now in the last topic I told you guys that I needed to kind of conceal some of my cables because I had them running every which way um, and the best way to conceal a lot of your wires, especially um, your speaker wire, is cable hiders. Those little plastic cables that you can kind of stick to your floor base, to the floorboard, or um, a wall, and you can hide your cables inside of it. It's the easiest and best way to hide those what we call spaghetti noodles, those speaker wires that are just everywhere. Even behind your entertainment center, it's very important that you get your cables managed for multiple reasons. One is because it could be a trip hazard, depending on how you have your speaker set up. It could be in a walkway. Um, so you don't want people stepping on the wire itself or tripping over them or snagging on them and then pulling them loose or knocking over a speaker, especially if you have kids or pets. Behind your receiver and all your um, equipment, you want those managed too for a couple of reasons. One is whenever you're changing your receiver or you're upgrading, if those speakers are labeled and they're managed well, it's easy to uninstall and reinstall. You can put everything right back where you used to have it because everything's nice and tidy. And also, it keeps things from snagging and getting a short and touching. 
I personally fried one of my receivers when I was younger because my wires touched. My positive and negative touched each other and it sent a shortage to my receiver and it blew it up. And that shouldn't have happened if I didn't have all these speaker wires going every which way. So you wanna have everything nice and tidy. Now for all of the men who have wives, a girlfriend, if you live at home with your family, your mom, you wanna have speaker cable hiders because they're not gonna want wires going every which way, especially if you have speakers in your ceiling. You don't want those wires to be hanging from the ceiling down the wall. You wanna conceal those nice and clean. And these speaker cable hiders come in multiple colors. So if you have a white wall, you can get it in white. If you have a black wall, you can get it in black. I think there's a brown. So whatever color you want to. And a lot of these things are easily paintable. Just spray paint it whatever color you want to and it can hide away within the decor. Um, so if you have a wife, especially a wife, she'll kick you out. She'll tell you to sell your speakers if all the cables are everywhere. So make sure you cable manage because you don't want to make your wife mad. I promise you. Now another thing that I'm going to get from my room when I get my speakers are bass traps. And this is going to really help keep the bass tight, keep it from getting muddy. And bass traps are there to alleviate all the pressure or all of the sound that gets built up in corners of your room. It's going to help bring that back out instead of getting stuck in the back of the wall. You may notice when you go to the back of your room is where all the bass seems to be. That's where all the buildup is. That's a big peak in response. And even though it's a lot of bass, we don't want that problem. It's actually an issue when all your bass is trapped in the corner. So that's what bass traps are for, is to alleviate that problem when you start sitting or moving towards a corner. All that energy gets stored up in the back corner. We don't want that. We want to kind of keep it flat, keep it tight, keep the response even within the rest of the frequencies so that we get a really good sound. So bass traps can get really expensive and they're not necessarily really pretty. They're really made more for a dedicated home theater. Your wife probably won't let you put bass traps in the living room, but if you have a dedicated home theater, you might get away with it. Now they come in different colors and sizes, so you can probably find some that are foam, acoustic panels, you can find some handmade, handcrafted panels, you can make some on your own, whatever you want to do, and you can find them in different colors to fit your room and fit your taste. But bass traps are really going to help tighten those lower bass notes, not just from your subwoofers, but from your floor setting speakers, your tower speakers, your bookshelf speakers. Those get built up energy too. So I think bass traps are going to be really important for me as well because the speakers that I'm getting have a really good bass response. They're going to, they're going to be able to hit pretty low. And my subwoofers already do as well. So I don't want to have a whole bunch of acoustical energy sitting in the back of the room. I want to even that out, disperse it, and have a really good sound. All right. So another thing that I think is super important whenever you're building a home theater or you're revitalizing it, whatever, are speaker stands for your bookshelf speakers, whether you're listening to two channel music, if it's home theater, surround sound, whatever the case is. I love speaker stands opposed to mounting your speakers on the wall. And I'll tell you why. Speaker stands come in various heights, 30 inches, 33 inches, 28, whatever the case is. And what they aim to do is put the tweeter of your speaker right here at your ear level. And that's kind of where you want your tweeter to be. So if you mount your speakers on your wall, you're supposed to put those slightly above ear level. Speaker stands do that for you. I'm against mounting speakers on the wall most of the time, and here's why. Most speakers have a hole on the backside, what we call a port, where air or bass escapes. When you put a port against the wall, it over accents the low bass. And if you remember what we talked about in bass traps, all that bass energy is not a good thing. You don't want it to be um, stuck in a corner of a room. Same thing with a speaker. You typically don't want to put a speaker against the wall because the wall then amplifies that bass coming out of that port or that hole in the back. So when you mount your speakers, you're putting that hole right against the wall and you're accenting things in the speaker and changing its characteristics. You're changing its color. You're adding color to the music that's not supposed to be there most of the time. It's different whenever you don't have a port on the back, then it's okay. But most speakers do have a port on the back of some sort. So mounting those on the wall can cause you problems. A floor or, or a stand, a speaker stand alleviates that problem slightly. You can now place your speaker on a stand like this and you can pull it off the wall. It puts the speaker right at ear height and now you have a nice looking speaker and most speaker stands have cable hiders built in um, within the stands. So you can route your cables in the speaker stand and you don't have to worry about your speaker wire being seen. So it's a nice clean look. It puts the speakers right at your level where you, where you want it and then it also allows you to get it off the wall so that you're not over accenting bass notes that you otherwise wouldn't want accented. So I have a few stands now, but they're kind of old. They don't stand up straight. So I'm thinking about getting some different ones. 
Um, so that's something that is very important to me and I think it's important to a lot of people, especially in two channel music. You don't really want to put your speakers on a desk or something like that unless they're monitors because the desk also reinforces sound or bounces it, reflects it. You don't want that either. So get them on some stands, get them up around ear level and you'll probably hear an improvement in the higher range frequencies. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. I just wanted to share a couple things I'm gonna do to improve my home theater, just in case you guys wanted to do it too. There's a lot more things I wanna do to this room just to make my upgrade more of an upgrade. The speakers that I'm getting, you're gonna be absolutely happy with. I'm gonna be absolutely happy with. They look beautiful, they'll sound beautiful. They're well known, um, they're, they're gonna be awesome. And I'm getting some of them in tomorrow actually, but I'm not gonna make a video on them yet. I'm ordering some of them tomorrow and ordering some of them a little bit later when I get a little more money in my pocket. Um, but the speakers are coming in. So if you're not subscribed right now, if you wanna see the speakers that I'm getting, make sure you're subscribed as well. And take some notes, guys, if you don't have some anything like speaker cable hider, just the small things, don't look over the small things. You can do small little improvements to make a big difference in your home theater. So don't look past the small things. Take the time to go back behind your amplifier and clean up the wires or hide the cables or get a few acoustic panels to tighten up your sound. Just small things just to get the best out of your system, especially if you're not looking to upgrade here anytime soon. So guys, if you have any more suggestions for anybody out there, for me or for anybody else, leave me some comments down below and let me know what you would do um, in your home theater if you needed to improve it. What would you do to make it better? Um, leave me some comments down below. Hit that like button, and if you're not subscribed, you better be. You ain't got nothing else to do. It's quarantine season. You can't go nowhere. So just watch K-Pace Guy all day, you know? Just watch me all day. So guys, we'll see you in the next video. K-Pace Guy out. Peace.